Hello, what is going on? I'm L Director. This is L Director Vision, and you're watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. Today, we're going to take a look at the basics of node based compositing. This is really designed for filmmakers out there that want to kind of bring their own visions to life because we've got this amazing tool called DaVinci Resolve that you can get for free that gives you editing. It includes a world class compositor, which is Fusion. That's what we're going to be looking at today. You've got, you know, best in class color grading with the color page and it's got a pretty decent audio editor with the Fairlight uh, audio page as well. So inside one program, one application, you have the entire post-production suite to go about creating uh, your next masterpiece and I want to teach you guys today how nodes work and we're going to kind of just look at a simple composite and kind of see one why nodes are better than layers and to you know help you get comfortable with them i think anybody making the transition over from premiere or after effects can be a bit daunted by uh taking a look at these crazy flow charts that we're going to building so i really just want to simplify all that today so at its simplest a node is just this little icon here in the side of the flow chart that does something a node can bring an image into the computer a node can put it back onto the timeline, a node can uh, change something to the image. So if I take a look at this shot right here, I want to look at this green screened element. I have two viewers up here, viewer one, viewer two. And if I select a node and press one or two on the keyboard, it moves it into the corresponding viewer. Likewise, I can do it with this other node I have, this background I'm going to be using of these mountains. I can put it in one or two. But for right now, let's just look at the first one. So I'm just tapping one on the keyboard to do that. And if I want to do something to the image, I can add a node. And right here on this toolbar are some of the most common nodes that we'll use. For instance, I have a color correction node. And you can see when I click on it, the node gets added into the composition automatically. And if I didn't want to do that, if I want to stick the node somewhere else, all I have to do is unselect a node and then click the new one. And you can see it gets added back in that way and I can connect it manually. So how do we connect them? What, what are we looking at here? We are going to build a flow chart. So I start with the image and now I want to color correct it. So I'm going to take the color corrector and I'm going to view it. And so far nothing has changed, right? I just pressed one. You can see it lit up down here, sending it to the first viewer. And now I can come in and color correct the image and we can see that that effect is applied. It is not applied to the original. If I go back and I view the first image like I am right now, we can see it is unaffected. Now I can take this color corrector and we'll throw it up in viewer two by pressing two. There we are. And now I want to blur the image. Well, I've got this blur node I just added and we can see it's got a bunch of different inputs. It's got an effect mask input and it's got this normal yellow input. And if I drag that input to the output of the previous node, Okay, now if I view it, we'll view that in number two, I can go ahead and blur the image. And because I'm working at this node-based setup, at any point in time, I can go into my chain and view just the color corrected version. I could view it without any effects applied. I could view the other shot entirely. You can like just zoom in to whatever you're working on and only need to view that certain part of it. And it's really nice and really helpful to especially start troubleshooting uh, really large composites. Now, we have these two images just kind of going out into space. We want to put them on top of the background. And the way we do that is with what's called a merge node. And I can press Control Spacebar and type in the word merge, not merged, merge. There it is. And I can add it in, and that adds me a merge node. Let's take a look at this. We can see it's got three inputs. It's got an effect mask. It's got this green one, which is your foreground. And it has a yellow one for a background. Hey, I know what that is. Let's put the background into the mountains. And then I want to take a look at that node. We can view it. I just threw it up here in one. We can see we're looking at it here at merge node one. And now I can take the foreground and stick that up there. And now when we look at our final shot, we can see that we've got the color corrected blurred version of the girl on top of the mountains. Now, this is not something you would normally go about doing most of the time. So let's make this something that we can relate to a little bit more. I'm going to delete these three nodes and I want to key out the background here on the girl. So we're going to go control space, type in keyer, and we're going to use the Delta keyer. 
and we can see that automatically gets configured in. I'm going to go ahead and view it over here in window two. And I'm going to quickly configure this real quick. We're not going to spend a lot of time looking at how I'm doing it. I've got another video where we'll talk about the green screen process. So we've done that. And I can also put it on top of my background by dragging the output of my foreground onto the output of the background. And when I let go, it creates a new merge node for me. Let's line that up a little bit better. And I view it. And we can see that now we have the girl keyed out and put on top of the background. Now she's not quite where I want her to be. So let's go ahead and add a transform node. And I have one right here. So if I select the Delta key here and click transform, now I have a transform node applied and I can stick her right where I want her in the shot like that. Now let's say we need to start color correcting this stuff out, right? We want to make this all look good. How do we do that? Well, we can apply the color corrector and you may think, okay, I take my merge node, I apply a color corrector to it and we start color correcting the shot. And if I view that color corrector, we can see it's color correcting everything. Why, why is everything being affected here? Well, because we've got it at the end of the chain. We want to color correct just the background. So I need to put the color corrector between these two nodes because we're working with data flow and signal flow. I want to color correct it before I put the girl on top. So let's go ahead and delete that color corrector. Click on the background. And now if we add the color corrector, we can see it's in line right where we want it to go. Now let's say, go and delete that. I added it and I forgot to click on the shot first. Well, if I click on my color corrector node and I press and hold shift and drag it down where I want it, we can see those pipes suddenly change color to yellow and blue. If I let go, now it's back in line right where I want it. And if I apply my color correction, I'm only color correcting the background. You can see right here. In fact, let's make things easier. I'm just going to bring up one viewer. Okay, we can split our viewer off. Use this button right here. It makes it a single viewer. So now you're really focused on what I want you to see. So there we go. That looks really, really nice, just like that. And you could do this inside of a layer-based environment. So what's the advantage to working with uh, these nodes? Well, if I want to create another copy of the girl and stick her somewhere else in the shot, I, in a layer-based system, would have to come up here and go control C, control V, create a whole nother instance and then merge that one into the shot like that. And now what the computer's doing though, is it's taking the girl and keying the girl. It's taking the girl and keying the girl. It's having to do that twice and it's eating up resources. Okay, that's silly and stupid. We don't wanna do that. What we wanna do is actually take this keyed version right here and duplicate that. How do we do it? Well, check it out. We can add another transform node and I'm gonna disconnect this merge just briefly. I'm gonna hook up the transform node to the Delta key here. So you can see I've got two pipes coming off now. I've got one here, and I've got the one that we'd already moved off to the side and with the framing, that's why you're not seeing the full thing, that's okay. What I wanna do now is merge this new one on top of the other one. So I wanna take the new one and stick it on top of the old one. So I'm gonna draw a line between those two outputs and that adds a new merge node. And then that merge node, I'm gonna run back into the foreground and put down here on top of the background. So let's view it, there we go, that's looking a lot better. And with these individual transform controls, I can go ahead and I can stick her exactly where I want. I can come into the transform node and maybe flip her, make her you know, face in the other direction, kind of getting that, that Charlie's Angels vibe going on, I don't know. Just really wanna show you that you can divert your signal flow and use things twice before merging it all back in. Now the merge node also has some other properties to it that's kind of cool. I can come to where it says apply mode and we can make it screen, creating like a ghost effect. Um, they've got color burning, all these different blending options that you're familiar with from Photoshop and After Effects even. You have access to all those here inside the merge nodes. We're just gonna leave that on normal for now. You also have this blend option here that lets you fade things in and out. In fact, if I wanted to fade things in and out, that's exactly what I would do. I would keyframe the blend to create my fade. So what else can we do with, with this node-based setup? We can see the advantage here. Uh, what else can we do? Well, we can add text in here. So I'm gonna add a text node down here at the end. Let's just go ahead and view it. And we'll type in Indie Rebel. Let's make it two lines, just like that. And uh, I can merge that on top of the shot as well and view that final merge. We can see it's right there. And then just like before, if we want to move it, let's add a transform node. 
So with the text selected, I added a transform. And now I can stick the text exactly where I want it in the scene and really start trying to dial this in to where it needs to be. Um, we can come in back into the text node and start changing things. You know, I can start trying to stylize the text maybe. I can come in here, make it an outline like that, make it black, I can make it red, you know, whatever colors you want. I'm gonna go kind of this black color. I think that looks nice. Go back to the transform, position it right you know, where I want it, really just dial in the look that you're going for. And we can see at the end of the day then that our composition ends up, it can look kind of scary, you know? You've got multiple things happening, what is going on? But all you gotta do is just follow the arrows. And you always wanna start with your background and kind of work forward because your background's gonna be your main plate. When you come in and start a new Fusion composition, um, you're gonna be left with your video footage. And so you're just gonna follow the line through and I can say, oh, yep, I got my merge here. I got another merge here and it ends up into space. It doesn't do anything. Well, how do I get to view this back on my timeline? If I go back to my edit page, it's black. I can't see anything. Why is it? Well, we haven't told Fusion to output it back to the edit page. So let's go and click on that final merge node and we're gonna add a media out node. So I'm gonna go control space. I'm gonna type media and we're gonna add a media out node right here at the end of the shot. And that tells Fusion now to output it to the edit page. So now when I come back to my edit, I can see that it's updated right here inside of the timeline. And this becomes really cool and really powerful. If I want to make a change, maybe I want to make the girls aliens. I want to make them green. I'm going to go back into Fusion. I'm going to follow my, my flow chart. Okay, I keyed them. I transformed them. I merged them together. Okay, that's where I want to stick. I want to go between this merge and this merge and add a color corrector. So I can go ahead and I can add my color corrector right down here. And I can make them green or whatever color I want. Ooh, orange, that looks really nice. And now when I go back to my edit page, it it has updated. Now they're orange just the way I want. I say, eh, I don't like the Indie Rebel text. I want to do it all in caps. Bounce back over into Fusion. Click into the text. Go to my editor. We'll make it all in caps. Indie Rebel, just like that. Now I need to transform that down maybe a little. Nope, that's looking really good. Bounce back to my edit, and away I go. So you can see how powerful uh, this software is, allowing me to bounce back and forth, and especially to be able to come back in and see exactly what I've done to this image. I can look at this image, and because I know how to read these flow charts now, and, and now you do too, you can say, oh yeah, we took the shot of the girl, we keyed her, we moved her into two different spots, composited those together, color corrected them, and then slap that on top of the background, and then we added some text on top of that. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. And so if I wanted to come in and tweak something, it's really easy to find uh, where it is and where the thing is that I need to tweak at that point. So I hope this has given you guys some ideas as far as how node-based compositing works and kind of the, the powers of it, being able to branch off your node compositions. At any point in time, I can start duplicating stuff out. We don't need to pre-comp anymore. You know, this color corrector I added right here is something normally you would have to pre-compose in After Effects to do. Here I just add it in between the two merge nodes. The merges themselves act as pre-comps, combining things together. And that becomes really cool. If I wanted to, uh, you know, try to mask off a certain part of the, the image, I could do that too. I could come down here and we'll just add a, uh, like a polygon mask and I'll hook it up into the merge node. And what it does is it blocks off anything coming into that merge. So if I come in here and I draw my shape like this, there they appear right with inside that shape, just like that. I'm not having to bounce between pre-comps to make this whole thing work. So yeah, like, like I said, I hope this shows you guys how nodes work. I hope you have a better understanding as far as what you can do with them. Uh, let me know in the comments below if anything was confusing, anything didn't make sense to you. And uh, let me know what kind of tutorials you would like to see in the near future. We got a lot more stuff coming down the pipe. And uh, I just want to help you guys be able to make your films a reality. So with that said, I'm L Director. This has been L Director Vision. And you've been watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without the Hollywood budget. We'll see you next time.